but I'm also the person who the more pain I'm in, the quieter I get. You do? So, yeah. Oh, wow. Are you, I mean, we'll, we'll have Emily on here at some point because she has so much experience now, her mom yeah. and me and just the community in general. Um, but she, she would watch me during my um, treatments or like my surgeries, like prepping for surgery. Uh, and she's like, she, she goes, I had to learn what it meant for you because you just get really quiet and you like go into yourself and I have to figure out, is that because you're in so much pain that you like, you just, it's, it's just too much. You're overwhelmed. And I'm like, I mean, sometimes yes, but also sometimes that's just kind of like, it's almost like a disassociation where I'm like, no, this is yes. my body. It's not happening to me. Like I'm right. part of my body. My body's part of me, but also there's a separation. I'm still safe. We're doing the best we can for me right now. It just hurts. Yes. And disassociation is one of the things that we have during our journey, whether it's physical, emotional, mm -hmm. or mental. Yeah. I had the mental one after PTSD yeah. where I would walk in a room and it was like the matrix, like, and like the, the room would kind of move. I was like, what the, where, where am I? What's going on? And it was a disassociation thing that was, my body was doing. And I talked to my cancer therapist and she gave me some techniques um, mm -hmm. to kind of focus that. And mm -hmm. I haven't had it ever since, but it was really creepy. Okay. Oh, yeah. It sounds like it. I haven't had, I haven't had that, but I will say, tell me if this has happened to you, just watching TV. Like I like to watch procedurals. Maybe it's a cop show or whatever, but when somebody has cancer on the show or somebody has died of cancer, it's a, it's an automatic trigger. So I'm like, I'm like, Oh no. And I get kind of sick to my stomach and I usually just turn it off or I have to find something else. Usually a cartoon. The great North is my go-to. Wow, I love that. And I, I have to, I have to re-regulate myself. Yeah, is, oh, totally. Yeah, because I'm like, no, and and I never realized how many shows have cancer yeah. and the thing that's the challenge to overcome. I mean, regularly so, fifty percent of us get it yes. in some form or another. Yep. I mean, that's wild. But also that means 50% of us are probably triggered when we watch these shows. I don't Oh, 100%. Or I'm on, I'm scrolling on TikTok and I'm on the cancer um, algorithm. And mm -hmm. there was this lady that she was 31, so young, and she had sarcoma. And she was like, she would do lives like or just videos like, you know, I have like a few weeks to live. And he, she was like super chill. And then I see the video. If you're seeing this video, I passed away. Oh, and she started talking, girl, I could not stop crying. And I yeah. never had her. I could just, I yeah. just broke my heart to, I, and I want to cry when I talk about her because. You got me. I'm, yeah, I, I got some. She was yeah. such a beautiful girl. So yeah. she was a resident doctor. Her life was a beautiful husband who supported her all through it. And they couldn't fight the sarcoma. It was growing so fast. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It just, it just. I was bawling and, and it's, yeah, it's a trigger for us for, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, I even wonder like doing this, is it going to be a trigger? But then I was like, because we're doing it with the intent to help, yeah, we're kind of flipping. We are, but also being really aware that the answer is still probably yes. And being Absolutely. like, okay, but I have tools and I'm going to heal through it. Uh, one of the hashtags I used was healing through helping. And that's I exactly what it is. Yeah, is the thing. <laughs> My TikTok post <laughs> says, "I love that." Thing. It's our it's our flyer, and uh, a few people have already been like, "Oh yeah, what is this?" So there we go. We're just gonna load it up with really helpful things so that people can be empowered.